Yeah, that was a, a fun article for me to uh, research and write. And basically what I did was I showed uh, the peak in all asset prices in 1980. And the reason I showed the peak is because we had high inflation then, right? And everything was running up, not just gold and silver. So I wanted to look at uh, where all asset prices have um, gone since their 1980 peak, because after 41 years, just on basic inflation, everything should be higher than it was then, even though that was a peak. Um, and everything is, except silver. And sugar is also about at the same uh, level as it was back in 1980. Gasoline is, or excuse me, oil, sorry, crude oil is also below its 1980 peak as of the day I did that chart last week. Everything else is higher. Um, only silver and sugar are below their 1980 peak. So the obvious question is, why is that going on? Um, now, the first obvious thing that many people will point to is manipulation. And of course, there is manipulation of uh, gold and silver prices. However, gold is above its 1980 peak uh, substantially. Mm -hmm. uh, only silver is not. So I don't think manipulation explains all of it. Um, uh, and the thing to keep in mind about manipulation, a lot of people are bringing that up in response to the article. And my, uh, my response to that is, look, manipulations don't last forever. Um, they always fail. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go way back in history, the London gold pool back in the 1960s, they tried to fix and manage the price and it, it did not work. So these things always fail. Um, I think it'll fail again. Uh, there could be a number of reasons, uh, but if you're manipulating for immoral reasons, you can't win in the end. You will lose. And so I do think that we will uh, see higher gold and silver prices regardless of any manipulation. Um, but we've been here before. I've pointed this out in other articles, too, that you know, back in the mid 1970s, they had raging inflation then, even higher than we do now. And yet, gold and silver fell over a two year period of time in the mid 1970s. I like think most, you know, of your audience knows that they fell over 40% over two years. And in silver's case, when it did eventually begin, you know, when it bottomed, it stayed there for another two years before it started to move. But of course, we all know how that story ended. And I think it's similar today. Uh, gold rose uh, uh, seven times its price from its 1976 low. Silver rose uh, 11 or 12 to X from its 1976 low. I think the catalysts are building steam today, much like they did back then. So, um, I mean, I'm preparing for, you know, the next rise up uh, in my gold and silver uh, portfolio, because I think that's what's going to happen. Everything else is becoming overvalued now and gold and silver are the only things, especially silver, that are undervalued. So I want to, you know, why would I invest in something that's already run up a lot in price and is arguably in bubble territory? I'd mm -hmm. rather invest in something that's undervalued, that has potential. And I think that changes when the mainstream comes back into this market and I think they'll come back into it in a big way because it'll be fear driving them, at least initially, uh, into gold and silver. Frankly, this is not an area I spend a lot of time in. I don't do a lot of research in, in, in that. Uh, what we do know is there is manipulation. We also, in gold and silver, but we also know there's manipulation in all assets. They're all manipulated. Uh, the degree to which really depends on how much the government is involved. So uh, I, I don't spend a lot of time in that, frankly, because, um, you know, I take the old adage, you know, only worry about the things you can control. Mm -hmm. And I can't control that. So, you know, I can complain and moan and be frustrated and confused and angry and bitter at this, you know, control to whatever extent it may be. Uh, but it doesn't do me a lot of good. Um, you know, I do believe that eventually all manipulations fail. And that if you're doing it for immoral reasons, you will be caught. You will be uh, taken out, uh, so mm -hmm. to speak. Uh, you will not win. You so the short-term stuff, yeah, it's frustrating, and you know it's good to see some of these guys getting fined. But of course, you know the fines are lower than what their profits were on the manipulation. Sometimes, so you know that's all frustrating. But I would encourage people to really focus on what 
you can control. Uh, mm-hmm. If you really believe that gold and silver are the only things that are manipulated by the government and that you don't think it's going to end, I, I mean, w- would you really want to be in this market? For me, I don't believe that. And I do, th- e- even if that's true, I want to be here because I think it will end. I, it will fail. Manipulation has failed. We've shown this throughout history. And so that's why I want to be in this market. It the manipulation, the conspiracy stuff, it will end. It has to. And some people point that out. Well, it was the Hunt brothers that drove silver up. That's actually not the case uh, to to a large extent. Yes, they did impact the price, but other uh, uh, entities besides you know us at Gold Silver have researched this and found that you know the Hunt brothers, what they did only added about a dollar or so to the price of silver at the time. Uh, think about it. Back in the 1980s, what what did you have? You had literally every single asset was rising in price. Everything, not just silver, you know, that they were uh, buying, but also gold, all commodities. Lots of assets were rising in price back in the time. Gold and silver were responding to events. And keep in mind, by the way, why did the Hunt brothers buy so much silver? Because they were worried about the monetary system back then, the dollar. We have similar reasons to do that today, right? Um, But here's another interesting tidbit. Back in the, I think it was 1976, and I I, forgive me if I don't have the exact date, but uh, it was probably about four years before uh, the big spike to $50 in silver, uh, one of the Hunt brothers visited the uh, pits at the comics back then. And back then it was open cry, right? It wasn't digital or computerized. And that was actually an open cry pit like you see in some movies like Trading Places. OK, it mm-hmm. was like that. He walked into that uh, commodity pit where they were trading silver and, and everything else. And the whole market stopped and looked back at him thinking, who is this guy that's buying all this silver? So in the mid 70s, he had already, they had already been buying a lot. He shows up at the COMEX in the open pit and they all stop literally trading and turn around and look at this guy. Who is this crazy guy that is buying all this silver? So you would think in response to that, that the silver price would have jumped because he visited the actual pit and, Mm -hmm. and wanted to see the trading. And what did silver do? It went nowhere. It went nowhere for like eight months after his visiting the comics. It went nowhere. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it was the Hunt brothers that impacted the price. And again, there's more we could talk about this. There's actual research on it. Um, I I don't think that's why, uh, you know, the silver price spiked because everything else spiked as well. I mean, it'll end up being an investment if you sell it for a profit. But I, I do think it's important to view uh, gold and silver as money because they're the only assets that meet the criteria, especially gold, over long periods of time. And there's retaining value, retaining purchasing power. The dollar bills in our wallet uh, meet all the criteria for money except for that. They leak value. They erode value, right? Only gold and silver can retain value. So once you really internalize that, um, I think it makes a difference in how you view them. Um, again, I, I do think it's fair to state that that is more true with gold than it is with silver. So, uh, you know, I think over, you know, someone who's going to invest needs to understand that difference. And of course, this is what Mike Maloney spends a lot of time on. This is his core thesis or one of his core theses is that gold and silver are money. They're the only thing that retain purchasing power over long periods of time. That alone is a, is a good reason to own them. And and there are historical studies that show they retain purchasing power better than dollars. Just look at the loss in purchasing power since 2000, since Y2K, if you remember that, if you're not too young. Uh, Remember what happened in Y2K, everybody's panicking, getting ready. We'll go from that date to now, and you can see that gold and silver have risen in value in purchasing power, and the US dollar has lost a lot of its purchasing power. That's the key difference.